All right, now we're going to see what it looks like on a market structure graph when a company is breaking even or when we're, we're going to call it when they're earning zero economic profit. Okay, so before we do that, before we look at the graph, uh, we want to know what is, what is it that we're looking at on the graph. So I want to go all the way back to when we learned about break even analysis. What we learned, we started with the profit equation and we said that profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost, right? And what we said was that breaking even or zero profit means that profit is zero. And that in order for profit to be zero, okay, total revenue minus total cost, we can now solve this algebraically. And if we add total cost to both sides, we get an equation that basically says that we are experiencing zero economic profit when total revenue is equal to total cost. So when revenues and costs are equal, then the, the business or the firm will be experiencing zero profit or zero economic profit. Now, what we've done over the last several lessons is we have learned how to break down these uh, these two ideas of total revenue and total cost. Um, and we know that total revenue is the same thing as price times quantity. And now over here, one of the things that we learned about total cost is this. We're going to do kind of a little aside. Let's maybe go down here and we'll look at it down here. We learned that, uh, that average total cost is the same thing as total cost divided by quantity, right? Now, if we multiply both sides by quantity here, multiply by quantity on both sides, it'll cancel quantity. And what we wind up with is that total cost is equal to quantity times average total cost, right? And so now if we replace total cost with quantity times average total cost, Now let me come to this side. You'll see now that our new equation, our new break-even equation is where price times quantity is equal to average total cost times quantity. Well, watch what we can do. If we divide both sides by quantity, we can cancel quantity, and we now have a situation where price is equal to average total cost. And this is important. So here's what I'm telling you. Here's what you need to understand is that a firm will break even when their price is equal to their average total cost. And the last thing that I want to remind you of is on a market structure graph, where do we get the price? Where do we get the price of the op of the product, the 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 profit maximizing price? So if we got demand, we've got a marginal revenue curve, okay? We've got a marginal cost curve, right? Don't worry about the average total cost and average variable cost. We know that the profit maximizing quantity happens where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So there is our profit maximizing quantity. And we have to take that quantity and go up to the demand curve because the demand curve is a relationship between price and quantity. Here's price. Well, here's, sorry, this is dollars per unit, okay? And we're going to come over here, and now that gives us the price of the product. And so the price is determined by the demand curve. And so what we're going to see here is this, is we're going to see a situation where the demand curve interacts with the average total cost curve, and that gives us uh, a situation where the, where the firm is breaking even or earning zero economic profit. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that right now. All right, it's a little ugly, but we're going with it. What you can see here is, uh, here's our marginal revenue curve. Here is our demand curve. Here's our marginal cost curve. There is our average total cost curve, and there is our average variable cost curve. What I want you to do right now is I want you to pause the video, and I want you to identify four things, okay? Uh, well, excuse me, five things. I want you to identify the profit maximizing quantity. You'll note the quantities down here are going up by 100. So we got 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, etc. The dollar values are going up by $5 at a time. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, etc. Okay, I want you to pause the video. I want you to identify the 
profit maximizing quantity, how much this firm should seek to produce so they maximize their, their profit or minimize their loss. Uh, I want you to identify the uh, profit maximizing price. I want you to identify the uh, average total cost at the profit maximizing quantity. I want you to identify the average variable cost at the profit maximizing quantity. And I want you to identify the average fixed cost at the profit maximizing quantity. Go ahead and pause it now and figure those out. Okay, so remember that the profit maximizing quantity is going to be where the marginal revenue curve intersects the marginal cost curve. So here's marginal revenue, here's marginal cost. They intersect right here. And therefore, we're going to go down here, and it looks like our quantity is 600. So the ma profit maximizing quantity is going to be 600 units. Then to find the profit maximizing price, we're going to follow that quantity all the way up to the demand curve, which is right here. And we're going to come over, and we're going to count it up, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So the profit maximizing price is $40. Okay. And now, to find the average total cost and the average variable cost, we're going to go to the same vertical line here, the, the profit maximizing quantity, and we're going to go to uh, where each of the curves intersect that line. So if we, to do average variable cost, we're going to follow up the profit maximizing quantity line to where the uh, variable, average variable cost curve is, which is right here, so we're going to follow that over. And let's see where that is. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So average variable cost is $30. And now let's find the average total cost. So we're going to follow the profit maximizing quantity line. We're going to go up to where the average, average total cost curve is. And look what's happening right here. Isn't that interesting? The average total cost curve happens to be at the exact same height as the demand curve. And so average total cost is the same as price. So these two are equal to each other. Excuse me, uh, that was that's quantity. So these two are equal to each other. Average total cost is $40 per unit, okay? And so we have a situation here. Oh, we didn't do the average fixed cost. So the average fixed cost, remember, is gonna be the average total cost minus the average variable cost. So 40 minus 30 is 10. And so we're paying $10 per unit in fixed costs for a total of 600 units times $10 per unit. So the fixed costs are going to be 6,000 in this particular case. But here's what's interesting about this circumstance is that, uh, is that the price is equal to the average total cost. And do you remember what we just said? If you can look in your notes just from a few minutes ago before we started this graph, what we said is that in order for a firm to break even or earn zero economic profit, that that's going to happen when the price of the product that they sell is equal to the average total cost for, the, for producing the product that they're, that they're making. Okay, And so this is a situation which you're looking at here, and I'm going to point out what you're going to be looking for, and I'm also going to point out what you shouldn't be look, looking for. I'm going to show you why... Uh, this is a situation, this graph is a situation of a firm breaking even. Mainly what you're looking for is right here. Do you see what's happening right here? That the average total cost curve is, is tangent to. Now, I don't know if you know what the word tangent means. Whoops, that marker's not working very well. I don't know if you know what the word tangent means in graphs. T-A-N-G-E-N-T. -E tangent, two graphs are tangent to each other if they touch each other in one place without crossing over. So let's say that we have a curve that does this. Let's say it's a straight line, kind of a straight line. And then there's another curve that comes close to it and touches it, just barely touches it in one place and then turns away. Do you see that? That point is called a tangent point or a point of tangency. That is a tangent point right there. And what that means is this, is 
that they don't actually cross over. Average total cost is not crossing over the demand curve. Also, it is the place where there is the minimum distance between the two curves. You'll see that here, this curve is above this curve by this much over here. It's also above by this much. But as we get closer to the tangent point, the distance between the two curves gets smaller and smaller. In fact, at a tangent point, the distance between the two curves is zero because they are touching each other. So there is a zero distance between them. So what you're seeing here is in a graph, in a market structure graph, if the average total cost curve is tangent to the demand curve at the profit maximizing quantity, then, the, then this firm will be earning zero economic profit. So I'm going to write this uh, over here. I'm going to say if uh, um, the if the ATC, the average total cost curve, is tangent to uh, the demand curve, at the profit maximizing quantity, whoops, should be an R there, at the profit max Q, then the firm is earning zero economic profit. Okay, that means that they are breaking even. This firm is breaking even. Okay, now if you're interested in looking further into this idea of the market structure graph and, and uh, zero economic profit, here's what I recommend you do. Uh, look up on the internet the question, why must ATC be tangent to the demand curve for zero economic profit? If you look that up, you can find some very interesting mathematical stuff and economic stuff on understanding why the average total cost curve has to be tangent to the demand curve in order to show a firm that is earning zero economic profit. Okay. Now we're going to do just one or two more things before we move into understanding the market structures.